Howdy hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. I'm still here at Fjelldata and uh, yeah, we are just about to have lunch. I just arrived because uh, I well, had a good night's sleep and uh, there is a spa at the hotel so there is always this uh, morning routine of having a, a very good breakfast and then spending some time at the spa. And at 13.37 we will have a talk by Trident so where he will have a very interesting thing and my plan here is to record that and share that with you so stay tuned after the intro you will see Trident talking about his stuff. You really don't want to miss this. So, welcome to today's lecture. This is the second installment of the uh, Trident C64 demo lecture series, number two. Number one was last year, so this is the second. Today we're going to look at uh, FLI, FLEA like never before in 2024, and some unorthodox ways to produce pixels on the screen. We're going to look at, at two things that came out in terms of FLI last year, which is kind of fun because we th might think that after, I don't know, 40-ish years, everything should be found, but it turns out not to be. There are things that are kind of left, so there, uh, there might be more. And uh, <clears throat> so the, the cool thing was that, you know, last year, we were all here, pretty much the same group of people, but there was one thing that really came out of that that was super cool. Uh, so, uh, the talk was about uh, ghost bites in the border, how to produce unexpanded graphics in the border using various ghost bites tricks, and that was, I think, pretty well received. And uh, a couple of months after this, I got an email from Red Crab, who's the organizer of this party, uh, saying that, you know, I enjoyed your talk, that was, that was great fun. Very inspiring. I, I actually made one of these fonts that was on the, uh, on the talk, you know, the, the, the ghost bite trick thing. It's gonna be used in the upcoming demo by performers at X. Yo! <laughs> and that demo, of course, you know, that was the one that went, went and actually won the demo compo and is now the highest rated demo of all time at CSDB. So it's a pretty cool demo. And it included this little scroll right here in the border, uh, which is, this is two dates, probably the best uh, ghost scroll so far. It's, it's really, really beautiful. Uh, it was, I think, noticed by people on the stream as well, it just kind of, wow, that's, uh, that's an uninspiring scroll in the lower border, which kind of a, an outcome of that last year's talk. So that's a super cool thing. And we'll see what happens after this year. Uh, it, you know, ideally, there would be some other things coming out of that. We'll see. Uh, but th this was last year, so that's a, a kind of a super cool outcome. And today, though, we're going to look at we're going to look at the six sprites over FLI or Flea, uh, which is one of those completely impossible tricks that we're going to kind of break it down a bit. Not go into too much detail, but I'm, I'm trying to kind of spell it out in, in enough detail so we can see. The beauty of this, the, the greatness of this coming out. There is, we're going to look at how to split the FLI bug, uh, some Vic Radar bug things. We're going to just quickly go through the no sprites demo, just part by part, boom, boom, boom. Go through everything in there. And as a little bonus, there will be a, a, a takeaway that I think we can sort of, that you can use in your own productions, a, a very nice little neat trick. Uh, so, six sprites over FLI. Or flea. I'm gonna call it flea. You could call it fly or fly, or, but flea I think is the best name for it. So this was a, a demo that came out in uh, uh, Transmission 64 online demo compo in November 2023. Had this little screen here that I think is easy to miss what the uh, greatness of this is. You can sort of see that it's a picture and there's some, some ghosts over it and there's a a, uh, a, a scroll there in the border, uh, but you sort of have to read the scroll to, to, to see what's, what's so cool about this. So, but what is cool though, is that for the first time, this one is able to produce six uh, sprites over this picture, which is a fleet picture, and the six sprites also are uh, displaying a picture in itself, which is super tricky to do. We're gonna look at how that is done, uh, but that's really the, the beauty of this. It is the first thing, 
happening in this field for about 20 years. It was another six brides over a flea in the early uh, noughts by, by Ninja of the Dreams. Uh, those sprites were not as, uh, you know, as much of a picture as this one. They weren't as big either. But, okay, so let's, uh, we're going to look get behind the scenes, behind the picture into the code, what is going on here. So first, let's just kind of take a step back and look, what is this FLI flea mode? And uh, some of you might know it as a graphics mode. Some of you might know it as a code trick. And it's really even a little bit of both, of course. Uh, this was the first demo that used Flea to produce a picture sophisticated by, by Blackmail. Uh, released, I think, in 91-ish, maybe 1990, around that time. And they defined FLI as flexible line interpretation, which is, who knows what that's supposed to mean? It's, a, it's just three letters. I don't, I don't know what, what is to be interpreted and that is not very flexible either, so it's just a <laughs> FLI, who knows? Some have called it uh, flexible line integrations, flexible line inter interleaving, there are some, some different names for it. Uh, but it was really not really first invented as a graphics mode trick or a graphics mode, but the first, I think, the first version of this was in a <clears throat> demo called Charlatan by Beyond Force, which used this trick, we can see up here, to produce what looks like uh, 37 raster splits and at this time a raster split really meant that you had to split or, or set the color of a color register as quickly as possible which you can't do that more than you, know, you have to be four cycles between each setting of this register so there is no way to produce this so many colors using this technique and the scroll text here is just bullshitting on about how this is done using an oscilloscope to measure the CPU and finding illegal opcodes and really pushing it. It's just bullshit. And it's what it really is, it's this cool little new invention up here called, later called Flea. And uh, <clears throat> so, so this, was, this was kind of the first version of this, the super many splits, and the first version of Flea as well. So let's just look at the code and what is happening here. You don't need to really know all of this, but this is what a typical FLI flea routine looks like. This is the code behind the picture. There are two things happening here. The first one is that we re we're setting a, a register called DO18. That is the one that is setting new colors, uh, or ch choosing which colors and what pixels to display for each line. And then, then we're setting another register called DO11. And what this one is doing, this is the real trick. So here is a real trick. We are forcing the uh, VIC chip to read new colors every line. Normally in a picture of the, of the VIC chip, kind of the, the default screen mode, you can have 2 plus 1 plus 1. So four uh, uh, colors in each 8 by 8 pixel character block. That's just the maximum. There is no way around that. But what we can do here is forcing new colors to be read for every line so that you're getting two new colors every line. So you still have the background color and one of the other colors fixed per eight block pixel, and they get two new colors per line because you're doing this. You're pushing the, kind of forcing the VIC chip into reading new colors into the color registers, displaying them every line. The trick here is we need to do this kind of synchronized with how the raster beam is painting the picture on the screen because we, we need to start this at the starting point needs to be is that the leftmost point of the screen and kind of going forward into the right part here. And normally we'd have 63 processor cycles at our disposal for to synchronize with the, the raster beam. It takes 63 cycles for it to kind of go one uh, revolution around here. But what's happening here is when we are forcing the big chip to read new colors, it's going to steal 40 cycles away from us. So the 63 cycles are now down to 23, because the other 40 cycles is taken one cycle per color register that is displayed on the screen. Boom, 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 boom. So if we are counting the cycles of these instructions, we get to uh, 12, and we have an 11 to spare. So we're to, to down to, uh, <coughs> to 23. And every, every raster line that we show in the picture, we need to repeat this. So the, the typical display routine would look like this, but just many of them. You have some cycles here, you can do a loop, 
Uh, <coughs> but I'm, I'm kind of expanding it out here so we can see it. Now, the, the problem is that we need to update the, these registers every time with new values. Uh, the DO11 register has to be, be uh, set to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, every line, like that. And we have to choose these guys to get the colors in, because if we have the same thing, we're not going to have any effect. I mean, it's going to be the same colors. We need new colors every, every line as well. So those two are needed. And then we get some cycles to spare. So okay, so this is kind of the basic flea routine. <clears throat> Now, what happens if we want to add a sprites to this? Well, the problem is that just like the color readout from the VIC chip, uh, from the memory into the VIC chip, this, the sprites will steal cycles as well. So, we unfortunately have some cycles to spare. That's a two, 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 and three cycles that we can spare. The first sprite will eat up the uh, bottom five. So now we have flea with one sprite. Okay, we have some more cycles to spare. Put another sprite there. Boom, another no op goes away. Another two cycles go away. And three sprites, we're pretty good still. We have one more of these no ops to go. And now, now we're down to four, up to four, and there's nothing more to do. We cannot take away any more no op cycle burning instructions here. We need to be really pushing up against the the, the real code. So now four sprites with fleet, boom, we're maxed out. There's nothing more we can do. Or maybe there isn't. Maybe there is more we can do. Maybe we're not really there. And it turns out that there is a little bit of flexibility in how we steal those cycles away from the, the big chip, steals the cycles away. Because uh, some of these instructions take a little longer. Those take four cycles, but some of them take more. They take six. And the big chip is nice enough to say, okay, you actually, you're, you're currently executing a, sort of a longer instruction. We're going to let you do that for two more cycles. And then we're kind of stealing away your, the, the memory again. So what Crossbow Crest, I think, was the first one to, to, to ma make this possible was to set, uh, use a bunch of variants of the, what's called the illegal opcodes, or the undocumented opcodes of this uh, 6502, 6510 chip. And uh, some of them take longer. Some of them are these six cycle instructions. Plus, they have the added, the added benefit of being able to combine this loading with, uh, through a various set of smart ways. You can sort of load only one of these, and they can use, for example, an increment uh, instead of a store. So they can just add one more. And that way we can push this out a little bit, and we get that extra cycle in. And we can do six sprites. Oh, sorry, five sprites. <coughs> so, <coughs> five sprites was done, and then Ninja of the Dream figured out a way to do six. And I'm, I'm not going to actually look at that just now, uh, but here's what it looks like. This is the one, the, what we were seeing. You know, the, the sprites are really covering the whole thing, even down to uh, almost the entire screen. Uh, here's a better picture. You can really see how, how far this is out. Uh, these are six sprites. What, what does that make? That's like 48 times six, which is something like 180-ish pixels wide. So it's not really full sc uh, screen width, but, but pretty close to it. So you see this part, and you look into memory to, to figure out the code. You think this is a, you know, ha, you know how to do this, right? You just open a monitor, disassemble the code, and that's it. Now you know all the tricks. <laughs> no, no, no. This is the code. It's, in, you know, there's no way completely impenetrable. It's like watching random data in memory. <laughs> it's, it's, you don't see it as, it doesn't even look like code. It's just that weird. But we do recognize a few things. We recognize this. We saw that store accumulator in DO11. So there is apparently something going on with that register here. And there is something more here. We store X in that register. And again, there, so there is something that we can recognize, but then SAX, that's a, 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 an instruction that we don't register, uh, remember from our learning days of the 6502, those, that's one of those undocumented ones. And there are some weird things going on in between. So <clears throat> what's really happening here 
Actually, one of the things that we do notice is that we are just storing things all the time. We are not actually loading a value. It's just store, store, store. And the trick here is that the, uh, some of these uh, instructions, they manipulate and change the contents of the A and the X register and the Y register in various ways, depending on the <coughs> number that is here and some of the bits in uh, the lower byte. So you had to find a kind of a combination of, of instructions, values that you were going to store, and uh, the, the places where you're going to store them in. And you can do that, and then you're, you're set with this. But there is no way to kind of work your way back from this without knowing how it was created. It's just impossible to figure it out. So this is, of course, there are some people who are able to sort of figure out. I think, you know, HCL here probably almost figured this one out. Almost. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you were, how close were you? Well, well, I did, I did the assembly. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't find a pattern in it. Really. That's what you expect. Yeah. Like a, a normal three time in Google, pattern no eight. Yeah. But it, that just wasn't hardly the pattern, so I, I had to give it up. <laughs> this is, and this is like, you know, this is, I, I don't know if this, this is on the stream, but we have the, the person in the audience here is actually voted as the, the best. C64 coder of all time at CSTB, I think. Uh, so it's not even able to figure this one out. So, and this is now, WVL is the, the coder who did this. Uh, it's like a, you know, this is like black magic. That's one person in the world who's able to do this. He did it last year. It is insane. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so this is the end result. But then there is more. <laughs> that was just the first step. Like that impossible thing was just step one. There are some more things to this as well that, that's not really apparent from. So underneath here, we're kind of executing those instructions. They're, they're taking those uh, extra cycles over here and over here. In the middle of the screen, there is no cycles left, and there's actually very little cycles out there as well because of the, the, the sprite stealing cycles. But it's just kind of going through those instructions all the way over here. What you're not seeing, but when you start to think about this, you start to realize, how are those sprites being made so long and covering the screen? Because normally, when you're, normally a sprite is just 21 uh, pixels high. Mm. And if you want to make them higher, you can, even, you can either multiply them, which means that you just kind of put them 21 uh, pixels lower down, and the big chip will read them again and again and again. Or you can do things with, with the stretch register and uh, kind of stretch them out. But, all those things take cycles as well. <laughs> Where do those cycles come from? Here, there are no cycles left. Mm -hmm. Everything goes into this weird routine of setting those, those color registers and the triggering the picture to read them out. Where, what, what is going on? And so that's kind of the, the, the second level of this beauty here is how the sprites are kind of covering the entire screen. The trick here, the two tricks. Uh, the first one is up here, we're using a, a trick or he's using a trick to called sprite crunching. Kind of a weird name because we're not really scrunching the sprites, we're all pushing them together, but we're really stressing them out in a way to, uh, to make them cover all the way up to this place. And uh, then after doing that, you immediately do the multiplexes so you kind of update the Y pointers to cover this part here. So what happens is that the Victor chip will just keep on doing its sprite thing and it will cover the entire area. Okay, that's one, the first kind of trick here. Just how do we get the sprites to cover the whole thing? Then, the final trick, which I have no idea how this is even remotely possible to do, is figuring out a way to make the uh, sprite pointers uh, show this picture. Because every time we're changing that color register, we're also changing where the Vic chip is reading data to display the sprites. So on every line, we have that weird code that no one but one person in the world can figure out what, what's even doing. And <laughs> it's changing those color registers and the sprite pointers. So you need to you work your way backward to figure out where to place the sprite data in memory so it will display this picture. I have no idea how that is done. It's even two pictures. They're, they're switching over uh, in, in two directions. It is, this is, 
you know, incredible what we're seeing here. And it's lost on almost everyone. We're just seeing a picture with some nice ghosts on it. That's it. But underneath, there's so much complexity and so many years of thinking about this to <laughs> come up to this point that we're seeing here. So that, that's, I, I, I think this is just incredible. And it, it's uh, something that we should just yeah, highlight as much as we can because it's just insanely cool. So this was a, uh, yeah. WBL CNL is a guy. So that's it. The, the other one, so the, the next thing, that was the first thing. This is the, the best thing that came out in terms of uh, uh, 2023 in terms of new code. The other thing is, is, uh, is actually from, from, um, from me. Uh, it's a way to, to split the, the flea bug, which is, uh, was released on this little demo here. Uh, we can recognize the kind of style of, of massive raster split, kind of fake raster splits. Uh, except the, the new thing was that we could put one more split over here. Uh, that was that was a trick. And uh, what is that trick? Well, <clears throat> one problem with flea is that we have something called the flea bug, which is three characters or, or uh, what's that? It's Twenty-four pixels all the way out to the to the left of the screen here that we can't really use for much because they are. Uh, the big chip will just uh, refuse to display proper colors there. Uh, if you're using multicolor flea, you can actually use the uh, uh, background color there freely, but that's just one color, and the other colors are weird. They're, they're not behaving as you'd expect them to. If you're using uh, uh, a uh, single color uh, flea mode, you can get a gray little bug, and that's what we saw over here. There's some gray, gray area back here. Uh, there is, a, seems like there is really no way to make use of that. In fact, there are some, maybe the, the best example of, of that flea bug is uh, <laughs> this, uh, it's a flea bug picture here, and you see some uh, gray area over here uh, that in this case so nicely aligns with the background of the wall, so it's impossible to see. I don't um, think anyone would spot it. <laughs> 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 so this is, this is idea. I'm, I'm pulling this out. This is kind of a, it's kind of a, a joke thing because it's a, it's a small demo by HDL. It's kind of one of these 50-year demos that came out with a, a flea picture uh, of the <laughs> of swallow sensor design. But uh, I just thought it was fun because we had that uh, uh, that little picture there. Okay. Sorry, that, that little gray striped area there. So, uh, let's go back to this picture again. Uh, because uh, just uh, the kind of code for the flea routine again. Turns out that when you're doing the uh, flea with multicolor, one of these colors inside those three characters all the way to the left is actually determined by, <coughs> strangely enough, you think, by the CPU instruction immediately following the store to DOB11. And this is a known fact. It's been out, everyone has known this forever because you can see it immediately when you write your routine and you, you change this one, it, it changes the color there. So, <clears throat> can we use this for something? Well, yes, actually we can. <laughs> we can use that to do that six, uh, seven to six raster split. And how do you do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple, but not so simple. Because we can just change whatever is here. So it's uh, matching the color that we want to display. So the, the dec hexadecimal number of this uh, no op, op code is EA. And the last four bits, that's the A, is the color light red. So in this case, the uh, FLI bug will be colored light red. Uh, actually, one of the colors in that will be uh, light red. Uh, if we have, say that we take an LDA here, I think that's a, uh, that, sorry? A9. A9, yeah, so that's a, that's a light, uh, dark brown color that would show up there. And we can look at the instructions, so we can actually map that out, and we can find combinations of that that match different colors, except not really because there aren't all instructions that, that 
that, that can be, you can't cover the entire color spectrum <coughs> with those instructions. For example, there is no instruction that ends with the hexadecimal number f. There is none, except there is, if we go into those undocumented off codes. So the undocumented off codes, just kind of for reference here, is kind of a leftover inside the 6502 chip, where the chip designers decided that instead of blocking out the unused opcodes, which you normally do in a CPU, you don't want, you know, you have a, a set of opcodes that are legal, and you have the rest. And what you do is you add logic to map, kind of find if you're seeing a, a, one of those that aren't allowed, we're just not, not doing anything, or, you know, we're, we're, so there is a block of logic inside each CPU chip that kind of does that. Except the uh, 6502 didn't include that. They just said, fuck it, we're not going to do that because we're going to save money <laughs> on the chip. We're going to make it a bit uh, cheaper, which is how chip uh, economics work. You can save you know, cents per chip, and that's going to make you billions. So they left that out, which means that whenever there is one of those you know, patterns of bits coming into the CPU, it will just kind of randomly try to interpret that as something. And what happens is that, that there are some of these instructions that actually do things. Uh, some of them just jam the CPU. They're, they're not kind of going anywhere, it just jams it. Or some of them are doing things at the same time and in weird different ways. But out of those instructions, we can actually uh, find those that have the color light gray F, color E, uh, just pulling them out there. Okay, so now we've got a way to change the color of the flea body freely, you can choose those instructions. The trick is though, can we do it so that we're matching the number of cycles that we have here? We need to have 11 cycles that needs to match up. Actually, that's pretty easy because 11 cycles is a lot of cycles. Uh, we could just kind of get those after. If we have two cycles here or four or five, it doesn't really matter because we can just adjust those instructions afterwards and we can Sort of put that together and we're good. <clears throat> now, that's all good and fine, but uh, if we go back here, what happens if we want to choose this completely freely and update that dynamically? Well, now we get another <laughs> lift constraint here. We need the, the, uh, we need the timing to be exactly the same. We need the colors to be matching the color, that, or so the opcode to match the colors that we want. But then we also want the uh, constant number of bytes here, because we want to go in and poke into those values dynamically. Uh, there is not much time to do that, we need to go in. And it turns out there is a way, and this is it. Here it is. So those are the instructions that are seven cycles per uh, color, that's black, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, some of them use just random uh, uh, instructions, some of them use those uh, undocumented ones. And they, they are all the same number of uh, bytes, they're four bytes each, so we can just go in and patch the code as it's running. And that's it. So this is, there's actually a way to do this with four, sorry, with five cycles, but then you don't get the, the uh, constant uh, number of bytes, the, ch the, the, the bytes are changing. So this is the, this is the bug. Uh, this is just nonsense instructions. Some, yeah, hmm. exactly. They're, they're affecting some of the registers, so the other part of the code needs to be aware that yeah. those registers might come out as garbled after. Uh, but they're mostly just uh, kind of ineffective and in, 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 not really doing it. Some of them are just comparing and, and, and loading random things from, from memory. So put that together and then you get one more raster split. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, a lot of work for very little <laughs> outcome, but so cool. So, <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> Okay, so the other one was, I, I went out to ask uh, on, on Facebook what would be some cool things to talk about here, the, the, uh, uh, the thing, and I thought, yeah, let's do that. Let's, and at the same time, let's look at some of the ways that we can produce pixels on the screen uh, that aren't really 
how we might think of pixels. So the first one is the Vic Gradoff bug. Uh, this is a screenshot taken from the demo, the thing I hate about myself. Fairlight, Pogadota, 2023, uh, went on to win the compo. And you're seeing a bunch of these gray little pixels out in the border here. That's the, the Vic gray dot bug. And the Vic gray dot bug is a little quirk or bug inside the newer version of the Vic chip. And it happens when you're writing to a color register that is currently being displayed. That could be, a, in this case, it's a border color, or it could be a, a, a sprite color, or just any color, really. Where you're writing to that register, boom, a little gray dot appears. That gray dot is light gray in color. Uh, there's no way to change that. It's always perfectly aligned with the cycle, uh, uh, the, the, the cycle sync alignment with the CPU. So there's no way to kind of tweak it in, in the X direction. You're just kind of stuck with it there. And it doesn't always show up. So it, it only is visible on the newer version of the Vic chip, but not even always on the newer version of the Vic chip. Some of them show this when the Vic chip is cold, some when the Vic chip is hot, some just seemingly random. So when this demo was shown at that compo, <laughs> uh, I think the compo machine, the first one did actually show it, but then the other demos have been shown on the compo, and then suddenly when this demo was to be shown, it no longer showed them. <laughs> so you had to change and find another machine and find out what was actually shown. The cool thing though is the, the kind of the history of this big radar bug is that back in the day, of course, the, the old big chip didn't show it, so you had demos being developed on the older version of the C64, run on the newer version of the C64, as, and then suddenly at random, those gray things appeared at strange places. You'd have raster splits, you'd have the kind of a, a gray line right in the middle of them, or just random places on the screen. You'd see a flash of a, of a, of a gray dot. So it was really seen as an annoyance, something that you wouldn't want in your demos. And the, uh, the Vice emulator did not emulate them. They just didn't show those things. So, you know, that was a bug where I could do that until, I think maybe one or two years ago, ish, something like that. I think if you have like a, quite some more years ago, <clears throat> sorry, quite some more years ago actually, but they had to use X sixty four SC. Ah, right. Yeah. Yes, the one that, that very few people actually did use, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people. Yeah. So the, yeah, then they threw it out from from Vice, the the normal X sixty four. Right. So people were forced to use a better emulation. Oh, okay. So, so, and that was what happened those two or th years years ago. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. So the, and and now that because we are now the, the kind of the default version of ICE is now providing this 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 great out bug. It's it's a lot easier to actually do things with it and use it for something. So this demo, used it for for a bunch of different uh, in a bunch of different ways. So the, here is uh, drawing a logo using the uh, big great out bug. The, the the horizontal lines here are just normal. You know, colors, they're, they're nothing weird with them. But the lines, the, the, uh, the vertical lines are done by setting the color black to the background color register while it's being displayed. And uh, then a carefully timed piece of code to try to make this happen. The trick here, the actually there's one little tricky <laughs> place here are those two lines coming right next to each other here and here. Uh, because you're, you're setting uh, a color register with a, with a four byte, sorry, four cycle instruction. You need four cycles or four uh, characters between each setting. Except here, we're actually setting them directly after each other. The trick there is to use a well, again one of those undocumented opcodes that does two writes right after each other with the in this case the number zero. So you get that kind of effect. Uh, and uh, here's another pretty cool way to do it. Uh, there's a kind of a burning heart here, and the the uh, <coughs> smoke coming out of this is made out of those big uh, gray dot bugs. And the way it's implemented is using ECM mode. Uh, so ECM mode gives us four background colors to play with, where you're depending on the the character that you're setting in your uh, your character screen, it will show either one of those four background colors. So in this case, there is a routine uh, kind of code behind this that just writes 
black pixels into those color registers, but at different frequencies. So one color register is less frequently updated than the next, and then the, the fourth is the most frequently updated. And then there is kind of a, uh, a fire routine here that cycles through those. So closer to the heart, you have more black, uh, sorry, gray pixels, and over here there are fewer. That makes a pretty nice effect. Again, completely you know, lost on, on anyway. It's not just gonna, so that's why I'm just gonna mention it here, because otherwise there would be no one that even they will know that this is what's happening. So uh, that's a it's kind of a cool trick. But okay, so that's the first that's the first demo. The, the second demo to talk about was the one called No Sprites, and uh, this was a demo by, by coded by me and uh, uh, submitted to the Only Sprites Competition 2023. So the, the Only Sprites Competition is has been done. Roughly at the same time, a couple of years uh, now, for uh, in the end of the year, I think four, three or four years ish, and it's seen some insane contributions. With the common factor is that you're only allowed to use sprites. You cannot use any bitmap graphics or character graphics or anything of the sort. You're only allowed to use sprites. Plus, you're allowed to use the ghost bytes. And you can choose, you can set any other VIC registers freely. So, I figure it would be fun to enter this compo, the only sprites compo, with a demo with no sprites. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it ended up winning. So that was it's <laughs> ironic. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and secondly, it doesn't, it's it abides by the rule because the, the rules say you're, you may use sprites, you may. You know, it doesn't say you have to use sprites. So, so this is the demo. I thought I'd just go through it, you know, screen by screen and see what's happening. This is the basic fader. There are uh, big gray dot kind of dealer pattern out in the borders here. Uh, again, I think very few people see these because they are just, you know, you don't see them. Uh, but they're there. <laughs> and uh, that's the, the only place where you see any kind of character graphics or anything is, are those kind of basic characters that are left on the screen. Then they go away and that's it. That's followed by a large, it's got a huge scroll through the border, spells out no sprites, uh, with some very nicely rounded uh, you know, corners to those letters here. So how, how, how is this done? Well, uh, this black part here is done by, by ghost bites, just covering the, the blue background color of the screen. And then right up before the border here, Changing the, the, the ghost byte so that you're seeing only the first repetition of it. The problem with the ghost byte is you get repeated eight black pixels. So you're just going to go, go on one after each other. And you have no choice but to keep them running for eight, sorry, uh, four characters in a row because that's the fastest you can update the, the ghost byte register. So you, there's kind of no way of making just a eight <coughs> byte ghost byte thing. Except if you're putting it right up next to the border, the border will cover. It, you know, the, actually, they're not even displayed on the border, so they're not even displayed. But you only see the first uh, eight five yeah, pixels. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're using the border. We're not allowed to use. It. Actually, well, we're at, we are allowed to use the border actually. And then the same thing over here, except we're setting the ghost byte way over there, and one cycle after the border, we're setting it to black again. So that's what we get the kind of. The, the, the nice sh rounded shapes mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, corners. Uh, that's followed by a uh, what looks like a kind of a uh, water and compartmentalized water flowing up and down. Kind of like if, if you've seen, you know how the Titanic went down, where the iceberg sort of opened up holes in multiple compartments and then they were all flooded kind of over flooded like this. So it kind of looks like that. <laughs> and it, this is done by really just splitting the color register uh, DO20. And we see the gray dot bugs being the kind of compartments here. Uh, it is possible to not show them. You can just kind of not uh, store a value in there. You get other kind of smoother water, but I kind of like the, what it looked like, uh, like this. And <clears throat> so that's only done by changing the color register. But it looks really nice. And then there is a, uh, a full screen, weird looking uh, FLT logo uh, on top of a, uh, a raster bar, a moving raster bar. 
where the, uh, you can sort of make out the outlines of the logo here, and, and there is a, a sort of a color blending effect as they flash with the music. And uh, uh, by the way, I should say that the music here is made by, by Fiegelhaus, and that really makes, that carries the demo, because it's a, it's a great tune that was released as a compo tune, so it was never actually used in a demo. So I was aching to use this in a demo. <laughs> this was the chance. Um, and it was, it's just an insane demo song that really makes, kind of carries this whole thing through. Uh, but the color blending is made by, by just a table lookup to blend the underlying raster bar color with a, a, it's a red and a green and I think a yellow uh, uh, over there. And again, it looks, pretty, it looks great with the music uh, going in the background. That's followed by a kind of a sine wave thing, <coughs> which is done again by just changing the color register. This is the, the frequency at which we can do it. Uh, it's four characters uh, width between each of these. And then we're kind of flickering them back and forth. So it looks like a very much smoother line than what it actually is. But, but when, you, when you pulse it like this, you see the full you know, uh, snapshot, it looks like that. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it just looks really good. Uh, here is a kind of a, a helix twister thing where <clears throat> we're setting the color register to a color and immediately setting it to black. And that's time so that you had to insert uh, instructions that do nothing uh, up until the point where the color is to be set and then we're kind of jumping back and then there is and uh, we see that it's actually done every other raster line because the, the, the cycles are needed on the other raster line to compute the movement uh, of this one. So it's kind of like every second raster line thing being updated. Uh, <clears throat> that's followed by a uh, kind of dealer pattern using uh, the gray dot bug. Again, by just setting color registers to zero, we do get a gray dot. So uh, by setting them more often up here and less often down here, we get the kind of dithering effect. And again, it looks really nice. Uh, by just, again, synchronizing the music, the music kind of goes down in, in energy right here, so the, this one goes up, but it, it just uh, looks really nice. Uh, <clears throat> That's followed by uh, this little twister thing, which is actually not made up of, of Vic Gray Dot bikes, but another effect that you can use, which is you can have a full ghost bike cover, open that up a little bit by using the, the scroll register, you get a little gap of two pixels, and they kind of do that uh, timed to the, the sine wave. And then we get another one of these little uh, set of the background register thing. And uh, this one, by setting the ghost bite to zero and set it back to black, except we're using the scroll register to make it smooth. So it looks really, really nice. And especially after seeing the other little cruder uh, color things, they, these look a bit like you'd see on a kind of Atari uh, 2600 demo. Whereas this one, it's super smooth, very nice. That one is followed by this little guy, which is a snowman <coughs> made out of ghost bites. Uh, and it, you can actually make it out of what it's supposed to be. And it, and it looks really nice because of the dinner pattern. The cool thing here, wait, what you can sort of think about, is the uh, patterns are two characters wide. Like, how is that possible, right? Because we can change this only every four characters, right? But you can clearly see that they're really not that wide. So I'm going to just leave that out there hanging as an exercise to the viewer here. <laughs> How did that happen? But that's, good, that's pretty cool. Tricky. Then that's followed by a, uh, a screen. This is uh, scrolling. Vic Great Out Bikes coming, flowing upwards, and there is a dither pattern using ghost bites, and then there's a scroll out here using ghost bites, and the other dither, dither pattern over here, a darker one. Again, <laughs> using the same trick as we saw the big nose sprites. Uh, scroller where we're setting the, the new ghost by just you know, right before the, the uh, border and then we can see only eight pixels again here we're just seeing those eight pixels and that's it and this is again so so nicely synchronized with the music and, and it just works really really well okay that's it those are the ways to produce weird pixels and now I think we're running it you know very long in terms of time we're almost an hour out uh, there is one little thing left, and this is the, the one trick that you could just take with you and use on your own because it's such a nice little way 
of doing something that just looks absolutely amazing. Uh, <clears throat> they call it Wonder Sprites, but because of a comment by HCL, they, <laughs> they call it the Wonderful Sprites. But what you're seeing here are just, look at the color smooth transition from a greenish to a bluish to a reddish to a brownish color. This looks like something you wouldn't expect to see on a Commodore 64. And the trick is really, really simple. The trick is to have two sprites on top of each other in different colors. The lower, the, the, the kind of, the, the, the underlying, the lower priority sprite uh, is always the same. But the top one, we change by opening up pixels in it. And the more pixels we open up, the more the underlying sprite will shine through. And because of the color blend, that the, the, uh, the PAL uh, color blend, we get those really, really smooth and nice color effects. And it's, I mean, you see it, you kind of don't believe your eyes when you see it. It's amazing and it's so simple to make. It's one of those things that I, I guess we've, and we've done it so many times over the, you know, the last 40 years, but it hasn't really, you know, it's not become this household trick just yet, which is, I don't know why, but maybe now, maybe now. We can make that <laughs> into one of those things that just you, you see it all over the, uh, the demos. The, the problem though is that we get two, we need to use two sprites per sprite uh, to make this work. So you, you can't really, you have to have those multiplexers and ways to do, kind of deal with it. But again, underlying, lower priority sprite, one color, one sprite on top of it, boom, open up pixels in the upper sprite, you get those wonderful uh, colors. That's it. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. And be back next year for number three, right? <laughs>